Hi there, welcome back to IndyCar on the 18th of February. Uh, apologies for the kind of sporadic nature of these programs at the moment, but the weather, my job, and a lot of other things are getting in the way of program making uh, up to date. However, you can't have failed to notice a couple of, what shall we say, outrageous uh, unionist ploys in the press recently. Now, I'm referring to two things here. The first one is Douglas Ross's absolutely incredible appearance at a soup kitchen the other night, posing for selfies and posing for uh, media photographs at a soup kitchen. Um, to make matters worse, Mr. Ross also claimed that the uh, the very benefit cuts, which are forcing people into homelessness in the first place, aren't actually cuts. And, you know, for anybody to have the, the brass neck to go to a soup kitchen after making people impoverished and actually causing homelessness and then smiling and laughing in front of these people is the ultimate provocation. And I'm surprised, in fact, that uh, many of the people who were using that soup kitchen didn't just simply choose to empty their soup over the head of, uh, of Douglas Ross while he was there. That's not the only insult that's been uh, perpetrated this week. I noticed today uh, on social media, in fact on most platforms on social media, uh, a short clip um, published by, um, who was it published by, <laughs> published by Phantom Power, uh, which appears to show a young Englishman uh, at what looks like a town hall meeting, talking about the Scottish renewables industry and the huge amount of renewable electricity which Scotland is currently producing. And his remarkable statement was that because Scotland had so much of this renewable energy and because it was smaller than England, that Scotland ought to let England control how that energy was sold. Now this is again another provocation. I think you maybe heard me mentioning yesterday that this is the start of a campaign of provocations by the unionist side. This is not um, this is not a violent provocation, but this and these these types of events are designed to cause uh, anger amongst um, Scottish independence campaigners to the point where it will hopefully set somebody off and somebody will do something which they later regret. Now, I mentioned to you that uh, the British government, the British state, has lost the argument about independence. They know they're going to lose the independence referendum. They have tried and failed to stop that referendum. They've tried to threaten all kinds of things uh, to prevent it from happening. So far, they have failed to stop it in any measurable way whatsoever. And so now they're resorting to basically, I suppose, doing what, uh, what John Lennon mentioned in that quote I offered yesterday, where they're flicking your face and pulling your beard and trying to provoke you into an angry response. <clears throat> so we will see a lot more of this. We'll see a lot more unionists coming to Scotland claiming that Scotland is too wee to cope with the enormous amount of renewable energy it produces and can't possibly be allowed to do that by itself. This is basically uh, people coming from the British state and saying that because England is bigger than Scotland, then might is right and England has the right to decide how Scotland's resources are sold to other places. Now, of course, we all know this is nonsense, but these are designed to provoke a response. And obviously, we all responded to them this morning angrily, uh, especially to Douglas Ross, who, let's face it, is allegedly Scottish, allegedly representing a Scottish constituency, uh, calls himself Scottish, and yet refuses to admit that the, the very cuts that his party has made to universal credit are not actually cuts, that they're not causing the homelessness, which he seemed to be laughing about in the photographs the other night. I think it's high time that the charities and the non-government organisations which provide help for people who are homeless started showing people like uh, Douglas Ross at the door. If he shows up for any kind of photo opportunity with a, a press pack of unionist press photographers with him, he should actually just be asked to leave. And if he doesn't, the police should be called because he's harassing them. That's the way to deal with people like Ross, not to get angry but to get rid of him because he is just simply trying to provoke argument and uh, 
provoke anger amongst pro-independence campaigners. The same is, uh, is true for this young man at this town hall meeting, this young English chap who was admitting that Scotland had far more renewable energy than England and was capable of making an awful lot of money out of it, but shouldn't be allowed to do that because we don't have a big population. Again, this is the old argument, this old, you're too wee, too poor and too stupid to do it for yourselves. We all know this is not true, and yet this same old stuff is going to be trotted out time and time again in an act of provocation. These provocations are going to become, I think, more uh, commonplace. And you'll find English politicians probably making the same kind of statements about uh, the independence campaign. Is it going to become violent? This is the other nonsensical statement that was made recently. Another attempt to try to portray the independence movement as violent. All the more reason why we have to keep our heads and actually just laugh at them. Because these attempts at uh, provoking us into some kind of action which they can then try and stamp out using their force of arms or their force of police or whatever it is they want to do. It's not going to happen because we are too long in the tooth for that. We've seen all this before. We've heard these arguments before. We know what it's all about. And all we have to do, as I say, is if you're being harassed at a town hall meeting by a person like this young English chap who was giving it large about how the rest of the UK had the right to decide how Scotland renewable energy was sold and who it was sold to and basically their their right was because there were more of them than us that they had the right to profit from this. These are just provocations and this is just going to keep on happening. That young man should have been put down and put in his place straight away by that crowd. They should just simply have turned and walked out of the door because the best way of dealing with somebody who is trying to provoke you is simply to walk away. They want you to get angry. They want you to take some kind of action. They want you to do something which will get yourself arrested. And that is the thing that we cannot do. We have to tackle this with humour. We also have to make sure that we walk away from these people when they do this. And that we don't give them the oxygen of media attention. Simply ignoring them is the best way to deal with it. Uh, I know it sounds a bit like turning the other cheek, but the alternative to that is if people do take action and take the law into their own hands, they will bring the whole movement into disrepute and then they will bring a police clampdown from the United Kingdom, which is exactly what they are hoping to achieve out of all of this. So don't expect that this is going to stop any time soon. It's going to get worse, it's going to be ramped up, there will be more of these statements made, there will be more of this brazen... Uh, what would you say, hypocritical nonsense from people like Douglas Ross. We've also had Jackie Bailey claiming that uh, accident and emergency waiting times which have been caused by COVID are all the fault of the Scottish Government and this they should do something about it. Well, Jackie Bailey is another unionist who is trying to stir the pot, trying to blame the Scottish Government for something which is well outside of their control, in fact, as well outside even of the United Kingdom's control. Since the Scottish... Um, figures on COVID, as far as I can read it, are actually lower than those in the rest of the United Kingdom, particularly in England. Oh, incidentally, uh, a strange thing that I noticed this morning, you know the London Eye, the great big dome, the Millennium Dome that was constructed on the Thames? Well, apparently it's fallen to bits in the storm. The, uh, the storm that is currently raging across the south of England has ripped most of the roof off the Millennium Dome, um, which just goes to prove, really, that they don't know how to build stuff in London uh, against the kind of weather which we in Scotland face on a regular basis. And in fact, somebody uh, quipped today that um, people in England were being warned to stay in their houses because of the storm, whereas people in Scotland were told basically just to put on their big coat. And that kind of sums things up quite nicely when it comes to the differences between Scotland and England. However, uh, I think my point today is basically that the provocations are just starting. They have tried every other means to stop the referendum. Now they are going to try to make things violent by provoking us. That's another ploy that's not going to work. And it goes according exactly to the playbook described by John Lennon. First of all, they laugh at you, they laugh in your face, they mock you, you know, they're going to prod you and poke you and try and get a response out of you. And that's what this is. This is just a very pathetic, transparent attempt by some elements of uh, the pro-United Kingdom 
better together side, if you want to call it that. I don't know how it can possibly be better together at the moment. Brexit apparently about to get worse uh, as as things get worse in, uh, in England's ports. And of course, this stormy weather is just going to add even more misery to that. In Northern Ireland at the moment, it looks very much like the people of Northern Ireland are beginning to rebel against the British state anyway. None of them wants the, uh, the protocol to be torn up. Everybody wants it actually to be put in place. And the only people out of step are the, the Democratic Unionist Party, who seem to think that it's the European Union's fault that Brexit has provided Northern Ireland uh, with this wonderful opportunity, if you like, to stay in the European Union, and they can't stand it. Oh, the whole idea that Northern Ireland could be more successful than the rest of the United Kingdom really rips the knitting of the Democratic Unionist Party. But they're in such a small minority now, it cannot be long now before the people of Northern Ireland demand a reunification. Anyway, so we'll wait and see what happens with that. But as I say, this is the start of the provocations and I expect to see some interesting new versions of this same theme as we go through the coming months. The British government knows that it's lost all of the arguments with, uh, against independence and none of the stuff that they are trotting out at the moment makes any sense at all. All of it is old, all of it's been disproved. Every single thing that is being trotted out, we are going to move to England if you vote for independence. Well, as I said yesterday, cheerio, don't let the door hit you on the way out. There are plenty of other firms who will be flocking to Scotland when we rejoin the European Union. So for companies who say that they're going to leave Scotland for England if we vote for independence, well, cheerio and good riddance to you. Let's get some companies in here who want to do business with the European Union. That's what's going to happen when Scotland becomes independent. And that's not far, not far away now. So, as far as um, the British state is concerned, well, let me just say this, it's not going to work. The people of Scotland are too long in the tooth, and we've seen this too many times in the past, plus the fact that we all have a sense of humour and we know how to deal with bullies. So, let's bring it on England. If you want to try and <laughs> us into something right ahead, you're just wasting your time and making yourself ridiculous. <laughs> Um, that's it for me today. Douglas Ross has, if it's possible, made himself even more ridiculous than he did, given the fact that he is persona non grata with Boris Johnson. Johnson wouldn't even uh, come to Scotland to meet up with him. And he is, Ross is now sort of, I, I suppose, been demoted so far. He's doing what Anna Sarwar used to do. Sarwar used to go around the streets looking for rubbish to pose in front of. Douglas Ross goes around the streets of Scotland looking for soup kitchens uh, <laughs> to pontificate in front of, saying it's not my fault that these people are needing soup. What a load of nonsense this is. So, like I say, take all this with a pinch of salt. And remember, keep a sense of humour. And wherever possible, if you're bothered by a unionist politician posing for photographs, send them on their way. And if they don't leave you alone, phone the police and say you're being harassed by somebody in the street and they won't leave you alone and get moved because you don't have to raise a fist to him, you don't have to empty your cup of soup over his head to get rid of him. All you've got to do is follow the rules. And if somebody's harassing you in the street, you're perfectly at liberty to call the police and get them removed. And I would love to see the photographs of Douglas Ross being huckled away by the boys in blue. Anyway, that's it for me today. I'll see you again, I hope, on Sunday. In the meantime, I hope you're having a better time than many folk who's trapped in traffic and snowdrifts and things at the moment. And just be glad that you don't live in London and aren't visiting the famous London Eye at the moment because it now has no roof on it. In fact, I guess a lot of places in London are not going to have roofs on them at the moment. Maybe they'll finally um, begin to see what it's like to live in a country where you get storms a lot of the time. But still, life goes on. Maybe England will learn a lesson from this that this is just one single small storm caused, or at least in part caused, by the changing climate. And London is uniquely vulnerable to that. And it's also uniquely vulnerable to flooding, as p people will discover eventually, I suppose. And that's it. I will see you again on Sunday. Have a great day and enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye for now.